Right, now let's talk about Bidvest, because remember, Bidvest is a big player. It's a diversified holding company with all sorts of distribution, trading, and other businesses. It spun off the food service operation as Bidcorp about, what is it, 18 months ago yeah. now? Yeah. So we'll see that in the share chart, but it owns the McCarthy Motor Retail business and some other vehicle-related distribution assets like Birchmoors and so on. Market cap, 59.5 billion rands. That's subject to or after the split. PE ratio of 16 and a dividend yield of 2.7. So let's show that five-year chart now, Ron, and just explain to us how the split came about, what the management dynamic is, and why it went up so much as the split happened. Yeah, so it um, essentially was uh, two separate businesses, and they more and more were managed as two separate businesses. Ultimately, sort of in preparation of the unbundling, they divisionalized. Yeah. So you had the South African uh, industrial type uh, businesses, including the motor retail, yep. and then the international, and it became more and more so international focused food services business. Yeah. And uh, under two different leadership teams as well. So they, they planned for this uh, unbundling. I think what happened was the investment case of Bitvest a lot of people like the international food services business we know that Rand Hedges was sort of all the rage yep. and but actually it seemed that the food services rating was sort of being dragged back a little bit by this exposure to South African industrial businesses wh yep. which wasn't that exciting and a much more sort of coherent investment case as two standalone operations do you want exposure to this food services group which has been on a good growth trajectory yep. And then the uh, the in the in the South African industrial. So the assets. industrial business, though, I mean, that share price has done well, but the earnings have been there to support that level of rating because we can see the share rating isn't absurdly high. It's not like it mm. kind of go went up and then became too expensive. And it's interesting because it looks like the the local assets actually got a bit of a re-rating. Yes. They were sort of dragging down the Who overall rating, yeah. and they actually got a little <laughs> bit of a better rating. Yeah. So now one must worry though because the earnings recently under CEO Lindsay Rolfs have been a bit muted. They've done a few bolt-on acquisitions, yes. but it doesn't feel like the old days where Bidvest would announce you know, something eye-popping every six months. No, most of the acquisitions were taking place in the food services side of the yeah. business. So you're right. Yeah. It, it's yeah. They have, I think, uh, more recently, they did do one small acquisition, I think, in Ireland. Yes, Norton's uh, or something like that. Yes, like a facilities so management exactly. business that does stuff like that. Noonan, sorry, not that's, Norton. Yeah, so they, that's, I think, got sort of people interested again. Their, their most recent results were sort of, they were quite flat. They are very mm. exposed to the South African economy in general, and that's uh, yeah. been a difficult Because really place at to core, be. what Bidvest is, is sort of a business to business. They sell literally yes. anything and everything that another business could use, from security services to cleaning to, you know, motor vehicles to logistics and all that's sorts right, of backup. Yeah. But let's zero in on the motor retail stuff, the McCarthy's business. So it's about 10% or thereabouts, I guess, of profits. That's right. Uh, it's a bit more of turnover, I guess. I'm thinking it's about 100 dealerships focused on Merck, Jaguar, Land Rover, Birchmoors, as I mentioned earlier. But is it a compelling piece of the business? Do you think it's something, what is the state of the South African motor retail yeah, so trade? It's, I mean, it obviously we have seen volumes, new uh, vehicle volumes actually for year to year to June, which is the reporting period, uh, were down 7% mm, yeah. volume. So that was That's difficult. That's what I would have expected. So it very much depends on the business models. The if new vehicle sales are down, typically you see secondhand yes. uh, sales up. Yes, uh, that's a bit more defensive. They do have exposure to that, and then all the motor retail businesses have diversified to become less cyclical. Really focusing on the aftermarket yeah. services, yeah. car yeah. parts yeah. aspect. There is a, a growing uh, pool of vehicles, so. They are less cyclical, so the quality of earnings is in fact slightly better, and we'll see that. Mm. So the, the, the Bidvest motor retail business, they were sort of flat uh, okay. year on year. Which is slightly better than, well, sort of at or around what the rest of the business has done. Yes, so, so not a big detractor. So I think it still has a role to play, and in an improving economic environment, we will mm. see rising earnings. Just a quick policy aside. You know, in this market, we have high imports or duties on imported vehicles yes. and that's to try and stimulate local production because that's, that's seen as something strategically useful important and also labor creating is there any change to that i tell you why i'm asking is because i wouldn't mind getting myself a tesla model 3 but if it's going to be double the price it's a bit annoying 
Yeah, and you're not getting government subsidies like yeah. in certain Scandinavian yeah. countries. So I think in, in Norway you can get a Tesla 3 for the same price as a Honda Accord. Because they so want you to drive the emission-free thing. Correct, exactly. So I think the government's made a, a multi-year commitment because the big auto manufacturers yeah. obviously make big BMW, capex. all the others are here. Yes, yeah, so yeah. I, I can't see that changing. Yeah. So you're going to have to And pay to be fair, that is an import duty which does actually protect a local industry. Correct. There are other things that we consume in this country like sports shoes and electronics which you know there's no local industry so what the hell are we doing what's yeah, the what's enough. the thing supposed to protect okay in any event as far as bidvest is concerned what's your view of it with its rather muted earnings yeah, and its so rather low pe share price has done well what's it going to do next we uh, it has sort of i think troughed uh, there is some excitement we haven't mentioned the freight business and that's been okay. doing quite well they've indicated recently volumes are improving they may doing a major capex of about a billion rand Where? in um i think richards bay potentially for okay. uh, it's uh, lpg they do richards bay they do durban and That's they do right. Maputo mostly. yeah and they've seen increasing volumes if you look at the the trade numbers uh, our trade surplus is improving which uh, bodes well fr from the demand for freight yeah. so okay. um i think overall if you feel that we've the bottomed in terms of the economic cycle and we're going to see growth from here this is a good way to play it but there's some concern that politics is worsening mm. not getting better that there's a potential for sovereign downgrade and if the economy grinds down and we have another period of negative economic contraction and everybody gets totally negative that could be bad for the businesses that sell you know commercial yes. products and pot plants and screwdrivers and pens and pencils yeah so yeah it does depend on your sort of mm. your your outlook uh, I think the it's a default quality is business. that everybody is negative. Maybe what you're saying is that if things do go slightly better than expected, things could pick up. So That's what are you, right. How are you going to yeah. call it? I'm going to say hot. I'm going to be optimistic. <laughs> and uh, yeah. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to go not hot on okay. this one. I just feel like maybe there's some more negativity around the corner.